Hey everyone, it's Sammy from Push Square, and like I promised, I am going to put together a Skyrim VR review in this video. Um, but I did just want to mention that if you want to know a little more about how the controls work in detail in this game, then there is another video on the channel that explains that, and I'll link that up in the description below. Um, there's also some more gameplay footage on PS4 Pro of Skyrim VR, which you can check out as well. So do like this video, subscribe to the channel for more PlayStation VR content content and more PS4 content and with that said let's get into the review. Okay, so the story of the Dragonborn is one that's been endlessly retold. In fact, I'm talking quite literally there, this is like the third time that The Elder Scrolls V has released on a PlayStation platform in a little over five years. But unlike last year's strong yet safe PlayStation 4 remaster, uh, Skyrim VR represents a real sea change for Bethesda Game Studios' gigantic role-playing game, and that's because, obviously, it's presented entirely in virtual reality. Uh, the name was a bit of a giveaway, right? Still, the results are really quite surreal. Um, while this reissue includes the original campaign and its trio of expansion packs completely unchanged, revisiting familiar locations like Riverwood or Whiterun with the PlayStation VR headset strapped to your face makes for an extremely unique experience. Uh, the architecture and layout of the world remains identical, um, but its scale is elevated to an unprecedented new level. And, I mean, given that Skyrim already has one of gaming's greatest ever open worlds, experiencing it anew like this is simply astonishing. I mean, take the cathedral-esque Dragon's Reach, which is home to Jarl Balgruf, I think that's how you pronounce it, and it's obviously a key destination as part of your quest. So, on a television screen, this location appears grand and temple-like, but when you're actually walking down its hallway in virtual reality, it reveals the true magnitude of the structure um, as extravagant pillars reach up towards the heavens and smoke gathers ethereally overhead. I mean, I'm getting a little bit poetic here, but it really is incredible. While the visuals have obviously been dialed down in order to ensure that the game operates with PlayStation VR, there's the distinct ambience of the title still intact, and it's not like the compromises to lighting or texture quality result in an ugly game, um, quite the contrary in fact, um, you overlook the odd aliased edge and even the small details like dust particles dancing in the air add enormously to the atmosphere in virtual reality. Of course, all of the immersion in the world would be futile if the game didn't control competently in its new environment, but fortunately Bethesda's done a really good job in this department too. While the PlayStation Move ones never really feel quite at home, there's definitely an inherent novelty attached to manually notching your own arrows or physically swinging an axe. Uh, a generous selection of customization options give you a surprising degree of control over how the motion controls work as well. So, for example, you can opt for a kind of turgid teleportation option that's a little too slow in my opinion in the context of a colossal sandbox, but you can also toggle on direct movement which is initiated by a push of the move button and sort of pointing where you want to go. Snap turning can also be adapted depending on the size and speed of the increments that feel comfortable to you and you can even enable or disable blinkers which help to reduce motion sickness when you're on the move. The problem with the PlayStation Move support, um, despite a very valiant effort from the developers, is that Skyrim was never really designed with motion controls in mind, and thus the game's never able to justify its convoluted button mapping with a tactile world that truly feels like it can be touched. In my opinion, DualShock 4 is the way to play, and again this option is augmented with an array of personalisation options that allow you to find a comfortable setup for you. The one disappointment that I have, um, and it's a shame considering the amount of care and attention that's been invested into the controls, is that the audio presentation hasn't quite been adapted for virtual reality as well as it probably could. So I mean, the title's timeless score soars as strongly as it ever has, um, but the fact that the sound hasn't been remastered to take advantage of 3D audio is unfortunate, as binaural sound would really add to the immersion of a world that's already 
already been given a whole lot of new depth. But you know what, it's a small gripe in the grand scheme of things. I mean, there are other minor issues worth highlighting in this port. I mean, the game's infamous bugs seem ever more pronounced in PlayStation VR as chickens like clip through cliff faces in the most nightmarish of fashions. And the interface never feels quite right in virtual reality, appearing as a flat overlay on top of the world rather than something that's been more tailored to the virtual reality experience. Uh, but the issues ultimately pale into insignificance when you're waltzing beneath a glittering night sky. So virtual reality breathes new life into an already excellent campaign. While you'll have probably seen everything that the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim VR has to offer before, you'll never have seen it quite like this. It's vast, it's varied, and it genuinely feels like a living, breathing place. Bethesda's proven that blockbusters can make the transition to PlayStation VR, and on this evidence, it's something I'd like to see happen more often. But what about you? Let me know if you've picked up this port in the comments section below. Remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're so inclined, and thank you so much for watching.